Hello and welcome to today's Bernal University webinar, How to Become a Teacher. My name is Dave and I'll be hosting things today. Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, we're calling it a coffee break because we want it to go fast. We're calling it a refill because uh, we went and we had the same presentation a few weeks ago. We had such a good response. We decided to bring it back and give more people an opportunity to join us. So whether this is your first or second time being a part of our Bernal coffee break, we're so happy to have you here. So let's quickly go over what we're here to talk about today. Again, these are about Bernal's education programs, how they can prep you to become a teacher. And so everything that we're going to talk about today revolves around that. We're going to meet members of the Bernal Student Support Team who are experts in these education programs. And they're going to dive into the programs themselves, how they work with online classes and student teaching. And again, what separates Bernal from other teaching degree programs that you might be considering. Uh, you also have a chance to answer to uh, get answers to your questions live. We do have a Q&A function. You can click on that Q&A icon at any time and uh, submit a question that you'd like our experts to answer. You don't have to wait for the Q&A portion in order to submit your question. Uh, so here are your speakers today that uh, most of the meeting is going to uh, is going to be uh, these two ladies speaking with you, Shay Lamson and Kristen Betts. Shay is an enrollment manager. Kristen is a senior enrollment coach at Bernal. Both of these ladies have extensive experience at Bernal and in particular are experts in these education degree programs. They're going to help you dig a little bit more into the details in particular uh, as you work with them, as you progress through uh, the enrollment process at Bernal, they're going to help get that application process all figured out and you'll learn a little bit more about enrollment coaches and other members of the support team as we go a little bit further into our material today. And so the next voice you hear is going to be Shay and she's going to introduce us to Brunel's teaching degree mm -hmm. programs. So Shay, take it away. Hey there. So thank you so much for coming. And, and it's funny, we call this a, a coffee chat and I'm sitting here with ice cream. So I, I didn't fall quite in line with what we're doing, but very grateful that you're here. Um, really quick. So to just kind of go over in general, the programs that we have, we really focus on trying to create a full life cycle of programs for you in the education department, because education is very particular. You have to align with state requirements. And so if you're here, coming for an associate's degree, we have a wonderful pathway that leads right into that bachelor's degree. If you're getting your bachelor's degree and you're moving up, or maybe you don't have your license, but you already have your bachelor's and you need to get your license. We have a wonderful master's program that's going to lead to that. We do focus in a couple of different areas. We have our elementary education, we have middle grades, and we have special education. And if you're up in the higher end of the master's, you can even go into secondary, which is going to be more of your high school students. But we do love to have that full life cycle. And if you do have a license, we even have a program for you in that capacity. So hi, everybody. Welcome to our presentation today. I wanted to go over a little bit about um, what it's like to go online. So our teaching programs are set up to provide more flexibility for our online learners. At Brunel University, we typically take two classes every seven weeks and offer six starts throughout the year. The MAP is offered twice a year in January and in August. And our coursework is 100% online and the field experience and student teaching are offered at schools to provide real life understanding, practice and student involvement. So why Brunel? So we are recognized for uh, by Georgia Professional Standard Commission. Our programs are intended for students who live in Georgia. So the programs are designed, accredited, and follow strict guidelines to meet the licensing requirements for the state of Georgia. Another reason, because Brunel was just recently recognized for another honor as the number one best in Georgia offering elementary education programs by the 2021 Plexus Global Rankings. And to give some praise to our graduate programs, the US News and World Report for 2020 awarded Brunel as the best private university for our graduate programs in education. So to say the least, we are very proud of our university and here's Shay to go over our support system. Thank you. 
All right, friends. So you probably know who these um, folks are already. You've probably already had contact with them, but we have our enrollment coaches and our enrollment coaches are really here to help hopefully ease the process of getting enrolled into school. So they talk to you about what you might need, some of the requirements, getting your transcripts, your application, your financial aid, and even helping you get registered into class. This is a really important piece because when you're working in education, we have to align with the Georgia PSC to make sure that you meet all of the requirements to move on and get a license, which is the important piece when you're, you're teaching and you're going for education. You want to be able to teach in a classroom and get that license. Well, the enrollment coaches are really here to kind of help pull all of it together overview some of that information with you, tell you what you might need, what your next step is in the process. And because some of this can be a little timely, like transcripts, we may need all transcripts on file to, to figure out what your cumulative GPA is to make sure you, you can sit with the Georgia Commission and get that license. They'll help track you all the way through the process and keep you on track because it's a pretty, sometimes a pretty hefty process. Once you're already registered and you're in class and you're rocking and rolling, we have our success coaches and primarily Miss Tessa, and she's fantastic. She really tries to keep in touch with you with regular check-ins, making sure, again, that you've got your GPA where you need to be. If your GPA begins to drop, she might get you on the phone right away to see what you can do to maybe pull that up. Our goal is to not just help you graduate, but to graduate high enough that you have no issues walking in and getting your exam done so that you can, you can be a licensed teacher. On top of that, our faculty members, they're, they're very responsive. They're very communicative. They love to be able to help our students. And we try to give you the best advisement possible. And so we keep the classes kind of small. We want to make sure that you're getting enough attention that you need. And again, we have a very high success rate of people graduating from our program and moving on to get a license. Very high. And a lot of that's credited to our faculty members because they're invested in what you're doing. And they, they know how much it took you just to even get into school in the first place. We want to make sure we get you into the classroom as well. On top of that, we have our online resources. So if you're maybe not the best writer or maybe you're struggling in math a little bit or you maybe need some tutoring to bring a GPA up, we have online resources and your success coach and your faculty may defer you to those resources to assist you and make sure that you're maintaining the GPA and the grades that you need to be successful here for now. All right, yep. And as you see the slide, it's all there for you. It's all kind of put into your tuition. We. We package it all together for you so that you have one great service protection for all. So we have our next start date coming up on August 23rd. Now, teachers here, I need you to hear me loud and clear when I say, do not procrastinate the start of your admissions process. All right. Get in touch with a, a, a contact your enrollment coaches right away because you may need to get transcripts. You may need to get exams or tests, or you may even need to take a test. And there are certain time frames that you may need to do that within so that you can make sure your test scores come back on time. Same thing with transcripts. Transcripts are always something that can take a really long time, but they're a mandatory need and they're a mandatory step for you to be able to um, get in and get that cumulative GPA. So make sure you get that done. But call us right away. You see the email. You see the phone number. Our fall starts is right around the corner. We got a, a what is that, five, five, six weeks? And we'd love to be able to facilitate that, but get us on the phone right away. Make sure you call tomorrow and get that step process and at least contact with someone so you will understand what you need to do. Absolutely. Thank, thanks, Shay. You said it better than I could have said it myself. Pat. <laughs> you're, you're, you're thinking, hey, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, beginning, middle of July, still got some time take, you know, it, it, it takes time to get a lot of this stuff done. And so, and so make sure you're doing what you can doing everything that's in your power to be able to, to make that start date happen. I'm also going to put that phone number and email address there in the chat as well, so that you're able to, uh, to give that a quick copy. Again, that's 888-712-5177 or send us an email at success at ags.brenow.edu. 
Uh, and so uh, Shay and Krishna, we're going to keep you around so that we can answer, uh, so you can help answer questions for us. Again, if you join us a little bit late, that's perfectly fine. Just use the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen uh, to type in a question based on anything that you've seen so far or any other questions that you may have about Brunau's uh, teaching degree programs. I see we've got some questions already. <laughs> And so Shay and Kristen, uh, let's get going. Uh, first question I see is from Katora. Uh, she's asking about those GACE exams, GACE exams uh, that uh, students need to pass in order to receive their teaching license. And so she's asking, uh, Katura is asking, what is 100% regarding passing the GACE test based on, based on the first try, et cetera? What services are provided to help prepare <laughs> students for the GACE test? Uh, and so, uh, Shay, what, uh, I, I see you kind of moving into grooving over there. How would you answer that? Yeah, that first off, that's an amazing question. So fantastic. So what I'll tell you is that not everyone will pass the gaze the first time they take it. That's it's likely that you don't pass all three areas because there are three areas that you have to pass just your basic program assessment right? Your, your admissions assessment. So you have your math, you're reading, your writing, and sometimes you may pass two, but you need to pass all three. What we do is we take the composite score of all three and we make sure that those are high enough. So we've kind of done something to say, hey, maybe you're a little lower in one area, but you tested really high in the others. Let's go ahead and take some of that composite score, that total score, and see if it's high enough to get in. Now, there are a lot of preparation tools out there. You can almost Google search them, but my coaches actually do have a few that are actually fantastic. And Kristen, I know, was just talking to me about one. And, and Kristen, I can't remember what it was. I think you said it was like 15, 19 bucks, something like that, that you can actually take like a pre-exam and you can actually study ahead of time to help you prepare for that test. It's a yeah. It's called study.com, and I guess it's a really good resource for students. And just to, to add to uh, Shay's comments as well, the writing um, assessment does take about 28 days to get the results back. So if you are going to take them separately, please take that one first, uh, just so it gives us enough time to get the testing back. The reading and the math, though, usually you could get w within days. So. Um, but yeah, uh, we have some additional resources as well. If you want to give one of us a call and uh, we might be able to through GACE or through the um, GACE assessment project or uh, programs. And they have some different resources and different study uh, exams and things like that to help mm -hmm. out. Yeah, anything to help. And you said it was study.com? Study.com. Yeah, that's one, that's one resource that we know a lot of students have used and actually have talked very, very highly of. Mm -hmm. um, but there are probably, no, oh, there's probably a dozen different testing sites that you can go to. But I recommend getting very familiar with uh, the Georgia teaching sites and making sure that you're on the licensing sites because a lot of times you can go straight into GACE, you can go into it, you can see other study guides. I, I mean, there's a ton out there. So definitely study because not everyone will pass 100%. Good news is if, if you don't pass, you take it again, right? You take it again. And once you do, and once you get the composite score up as high as you need, we certainly take, it, take a look at your admissions and we help you get moving forward, okay? But prepare for it right? A lot of us don't want to take two years down the road to start teaching. So prepare, get yourself in those exams early, maybe take those pretests and see where you're struggling and where you're not so that you can go ahead and study proactively and make sure you're ready for it. I also um, tell my students to go get little workbooks, you know, the ones from elementary or the ones from junior high or high school, and just practice with them. It's all basics. It's just the mm -hmm. basics of math, the basics of reading, the basics of writing. We don't need to think too much, you know, overthink it. It's just it's it's just right there for us. So so take your time, enjoy, um, and yeah, just study study hard. <laughs> I giggle at that. I was like, it is the basics, you know, the basics I haven't done in thirty years. So <laughs> true, true. Some of you guys may not be like that. Some of you guys might be in my boat. <laughs> All right, I see one from Miss Terry. Yeah, so uh, so Terry said uh, Terry's been talking to uh, Talita, trying to figure out that best path. 
look in possibly at MAT secondary. I have a bachelor's, but not in a teaching field. They've said the best path is middle grades. If I need more history courses to get the third any for MAT history, can I do these courses on study.com? So I think let's kind of tackle this in two parts. So I think the first part is, uh, you know, just kind of, again, how can we use study.com as, uh, as a resource? So I think that's part one. And then part two is that there's probably a lot of people out there like Terry who are like, I'm trying to figure out what the best path is for me. There are a lot of pr uh, degrees that are out there. And so maybe let's talk a little bit about, more about um, how um, enrollment coaches and others can help students find the path that's right for them. So first, let's talk about that study.com portion. And then second, let's talk about that uh, degree selection portion. Okay. All right. So I'll tackle this in, in just a, a big bulk. But Terry, I mean, don't, don't hesitate. If you want to raise your hand and make me slow down in this spot, please do. So when you're looking into the secondary program, it's probably one of the programs that we have that has the most requirements to it. What I mean by that is um, we align, again, with that Georgia PSC, and we have to make sure that we are meeting the criteria. And some of the criteria for that secondary is that whatever your bachelor's was in, the major needs to align with what you're teaching in secondary. So typically, if you want to go teach math, right, because that's everybody's favorite subject, you would need a bachelor's degree in math. If you want to go teach English, you would need a bachelor's degree in English to make sure that you could move in and do it. Reason being is that is it, your, your bachelor's degree is your content. It is what you are content driven in. We don't go back and we don't teach you everything that you might need to know from kindergarten all the way up to, to high school in the secondary program. We take your bachelor's degree and we build upon the experience that you have. So if you don't align with that, that's a little bit tough because that's one of those Georgia standards that you may need to have in order to move into that program. When we certify for teaching programs, we have to abide by whatever regulation they give us. And that's kind of one of them. The middle grades is a really great option if you don't. Like I didn't go to, you know, my bachelor's degree is not in English and it's not in math. It was totally in something different. And so if you're like me, but you still want to teach, there is some of that avenue of maybe going into middle grades or an elementary education so that you can begin to build onto that license. After that's done, you can begin to take a look and, and different GACE testings that you can take to help maybe open up the area in which you're teaching, but it is a little bit challenging. It's one of those things I always tell people start very early if you're planning to teach because you have a pathway that you have to follow all the way from basically day one if you want to be like a high school teacher, right? It, it's not so forgiving. You're like, you can't kind of change it all around and mix and match. You need to kind of know where you're going with it. Um, you've got a little bit more flexibility with middle grades and elementary, but secondary is a little bit, a little bit of a tight fit for you. Terry, did that answer your question? I hope so. Um, as far as study.com, you can take exams to help you prepare for the GACE, but it does not take the place of your GACE exams. Okay. So study.com, that's simply a tool or a resource to help you prepare for them. Um, but often you'll have what's called a GACE content assessment. And that content assessment uh, really kind of tracks and looks at, do you know the content in which you are going to be teaching? Okay. So often if you're going into like a middle grades area, you can test or you can study using study.com or one other resource, whatever floats your boat, and you can prepare for your content exam, but then you'll need to go and take that content exam to say, Hey, I know enough raising my hand here. I know enough to go into these particular subjects and you can move into those. Okay. So hopefully I answered both of the pieces to that question, but it's a really good question. Yeah, so, so Terry just kind of following up at the end uh, saying, you know, I was looking at taking the history courses through study.com to get the credits I need. Do, do you accept these credits? Oh, okay. So I don't believe you can go through study.com to get the 30 credits that you may need for history. Like if you wanted to go and make sure that you met the requirements for it, you may actually have to go back and pick up like a, a couple of history courses in your field of study. Um, I do know that once you get licensed to teach, you would want to talk to the school district because there are areas where you can go in and get content testing done. 
And you can go in and say, hey, I have enough to maybe set for a history content exam, and that may bridge your license into that area. But often when you want to go in and you want to teach something very specific like that, they're going to probably require a certain number of actual history courses. And most of the time that can't come from like study.com. I don't believe study.com um, has coursework like that though, either. I think it's literally just a study site. I don't think it has courses. That's true. It is. And it, it's almost like a membership. Um, you can do it month to month, but it does cost. I know that uh, one level is $29.95, one level is maybe $49.95. And each level does different things. So they might provide videos, they might provide sample tests, they might provide um, writing guides. I mean, so it's just different levels. And, and you don't have to sign up for a year. You don't have to sign up for two months or six months. You can sign up for the month and, and get it done. But uh, yeah, exactly with uh, what Shay had said, uh, you know, there is a need for teachers out there. And so um, definitely follow up with Georgia Professionals uh, and uh, the middle grades. You can go ahead and get your uh, what you need to get done and, and get your social studies at that part and, and follow up with Georgia Professionals to see what else would be needed. Terry, I did see your question or your comment where it says, so I need to take enough history courses to get a bachelor's degree. You need to take enough history classes in order to meet the content requirement. And you'll want to check with the Georgia professional on that to see what that is. Most of the time, I believe it's five classes or 15 credits. So I believe it's five classes. Most of the time is kind of what you need. All Yours right. is a very detailed scenario, but I hope everyone here, you guys are learning from it and kind of listening to these because they really do cross over into your scenarios as well when you're trying to plan and prepare for the right pathway. So good questions. Good questions. Yeah, no, yeah, no, this is great. So uh, thanks everybody for these questions. We've got time. We've got time for a few more. Um, so uh, I see one from Jessica, you know, we've been talking about all these content exams, et cetera. Uh, Jessica asks, if I've already passed all the tests, do I just have to get my degree for certification or is there another step? So uh, how do we answer Jessica's question? A lot of times you'll need to get your degree, Jessica. Um, your, your question is a good question, but a little vague. We'd probably need a little bit more information as in like where you went to school previously. Was it accredited? What was your GPA? Uh, what the bachelor's was, there's a lot more that kind of goes into it. But essentially, in order to make sure you get the license, if you've already passed your content exam, you've already passed your PAA, a lot of times you may just need to go and get the degree and be able to move forward and, and do your student teaching. Okay, so it sounds like if I'm looking at it right, I think you're, you're in good shape. If you've already got those exams done, head of the game, girl, head of the game. And that's where you want to be. Fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm seeing a couple of questions about early childhood, a little bit different perspectives on each one. So uh, Aaliyah has a question. I have an associate's in early childhood education. The bachelor's degree that she offers is elementary education. Uh, is there a bachelor's in early childhood? I'm not sure if my credits will transfer. Um, and this is this program was at, originally was named early childhood education, but it was recently renamed to elementary education, again, in, in alignment with that Georgia Professional Standards Commission. So uh, Shay or Kristen, uh, what, what sort of advice would you give to Aaliyah in that case? Oh, well, go for it, Kristen. Okay. So I was just going to say, um, so it is early childhood elementary. It's pre-K through fifth. So um, I would say that would give you an opportunity to get uh, your foot in the door, um, go ahead and uh, you'd be certified for, for pre-K through fifth grade. And um, it's, it's a wonderful program. And Shay, what were you gonna say? Nope, nope, you handled that re really well. When you're looking at transfer credits, guys, I think it's always really important that you, you move forward, you get your officials on file, you start that process because you never can, when you're in education, you can't be too thorough. You know what I mean? You always wanna make sure that you take a very thorough approach and you're looking what you take. We do our best at taking whatever we can that's going to make sure we also align and get you in that position to take the license. But I do think it's a great step and Aliyah, it's a, it's a great question. When we have credits, especially when we've spent the time previously, we always want them to come over and sometimes they may not just align with the criteria that you need in order to meet to get that license. So I think it's a good step to, to get what you can and get those education things done. Okay. 
All right. Thanks, Shane. Kristen. Uh, so again, like I said, we had another question about early childhood. And so this one comes from Harmony. Harmony asks, I have a BA in early childhood education from Liberty University. Could I get an MAT in elementary and license for kindergarten? What is the best option? So Shay, I see you're nodding your head. So what, what would you say to Harmony? Oh, I'll let Kristen tackle this one. She'll love this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> So, so let me just get clarity one more time. So you have a bachelor's or in what? Early childhood? A, ba mm -hmm. a bachelor's in early childhood from Liberty University. Okay. So um, that is great, but you will need, that doesn't necessarily lead to um, licensing. So you may be able to come over as a provisional um, teacher, but you would typically have to go and get a master's of arts in teaching in order to get certified. Mm -hmm. So in short, Harmony, you're a perfect candidate for our MAT elementary ed. Exactly. If you've got that early childhood education and you did not get your license previously, you would absolutely be a candidate for that MAT elementary. Again, we want to get your transcripts. We look at your entire GPA from your lifespan of history of being a student and make sure that you have the, the GPA requirement. But I mean, you that's exactly what we look for. So fantastic. Kudos. And we hope we get you for the MAT elementary. And what's really great about that, in addition, Shay, is that not only are you getting certified, but you're also going to get your master's level, uh, master's of um, teaching. So now you you hit that new level of five for Georgia professionals, and that's where yeah. more money happens. So yeah. you're kind of getting two, two birds in one there. So definitely in a good position. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Shay over here doing doing money. Well, money. Well, yeah. If you're in education, the higher the degree, the better the better pay you typically get. So you know, I'm all in for that. Um, I do see Kath, Kathleen asked a question about her writing exam on the ninth. So if you were able to get it on the ninth, Kathleen, it does sound like you have enough time. It usually takes about 28 days for the slowest test. The good news is, is you've got me working in your behalf once those things come in. Once your file gets complete, I'm kind of your go-to gal that gets it pushed through, get it through the admissions process, helping you get those admissions decisions. If we try to get those done in about 48 hours, we review everything all together and get you that admissions decision. So if you've got it on the ninth, I'm feeling pretty good and pretty confident that you could probably do it. One caveat to that, Miss Kathleen, is make sure you have all your transcripts in. Oh, that's the only thing we're waiting on. Okay, I think you're in good shape, girl. I think you're fine. And then I also saw Linda, and this is funny, Linda, I think I, I was looking at your name earlier. Um, yes, so it is relevant to get all transcripts, all collegiate transcripts on file even if they were a long time ago, because I, I do have mine from quite a while ago. So you will need to get those on file. Great news is I could give you a, a quick little follow up after this because I do have good news for you. And I recognized your name, Miss Linda. So we can we can get you an update on where you sit on that. But yes, all transcripts are a requirement. Okay, and then I think our last one is Linda thanks us. Thank, thanks, Linda. Uh, looks like our last question that comes from Christy. Um, so again, someone who already has a bachelor's, in this case, a bachelor's of human services, would I be able to get a master's in elementary education? And so I think again, and, and Shay, Christian, I'll let you dig more into it. It's those MAT programs are especially for people whose bachelor's degrees are not in education. They're in a different field, but who are eager to get into teaching and want to get that license. That is the type of program. Christy is the type of student that these programs are designed for mm -hmm. these MAP programs. So Shay, Kristen, what, what else would you say to Christy in this case? What I would say, Christy, is there's a couple of different categories. If you have a wild card bachelor's like I do, I, I have one similar to you, we would go for like an elementary or a middle grade. OK, there may be some requirements that we need to meet in regards to that. So like a GPA requirement, if you're in middle grade, you might need some content exams. Secondary is the only one, because if you think about it, you went to school from kindergarten all the way up to high school. Right. And so you had years of, of stuff that you kind of jammed back in your head. Well, when you're going to teach that, we need you to have enough of that core content, that that absolute knowledge in that subject area that you can then go teach those people who are going to be in your classes for four plus years. Um, that's why secondary is a little bit more stringent, if you will, to get into. You have to have that bachelor's because you have to have enough college background, enough history 
to get you over to be able to teach that. Elementary is a little different because you're starting off with kids who haven't been in the school forever, right? And some of it's really basic. So you're, you've got some flexibility in that bachelor's degree. We can usually take just about any bachelor's as long as your GPA meets the requirement and it was regionally accredited. So once again, Ms. Christy, I hope we, we get you for the master's of elementary education. All right. Fantastic. I think that's all the questions that I see. So thanks, everybody. These are really great questions that, great that we had to go around making, making Shane and Kristen uh, 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 work. So I appreciate that. And, and Shay and Kristen both made the call. Get everything done as quickly as you can. Give yourself as much time as possible to be able to meet all of those admissions requirements, take whatever tests you need to, et cetera. Uh, and so give us a call again, 888-712-5177. Send us an email, success at ags.branow.edu. Again, thanks so much for your time and attention and questions today. Shay and Kristen, I'm sure you'll be following up with a lot of these folks uh, here in the next little bit for any other questions that anybody else may have. So again, thanks everybody for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you as part of these Brunel programs in the future. Thanks again, everybody. Take care. Thank you.